Hi, I'm Sridhar. Welcome to another episode of B2Brain Account Insights. B2Brain provides highly contextual account intelligence for enterprise sales teams, SDRs, BDRs, account executives who are targeting enterprises and need high quality talking points in order to engage with the right kind of leads in those companies. So in today's uh, session, uh, for a change, we have a fantastic sales leader, Evan Kelsey from uh, Seismic. He runs a lot of their uh, national accounts for North America. Uh, yeah, hi, Sridhar. Uh, my name is Evan Kelsey. I am a global seller uh, on uh, working for a company called Seismic Software, which is kind of the, the global leader in uh, sales enablement uh, software, which you can generally think as a series of, of tools and capabilities on a platform that helps uh, sellers sell better uh, and your client facing people uh, sell and service your clients uh, better over time. So uh, I, I've got a background, uh, I've got about maybe 15 plus years in selling experience. Uh, I was with LinkedIn for about a, a little over a half decade uh, before joining Seismic in 2018. And uh, this, this piece, um, uh, financial literacy uh, for for salespeople in particular is kind of a a passion of mine, um, and it, it really was a light bulb moment in uh, in 2018 when I joined Seismic uh, to to really take my career to the next level and my ability to um, really provide value to my clients uh, and and also my own internal executives um, to uh, to a much greater degree than than I had ever had. That's that's wonderful to hear. Uh, so when you did uh, a session last year in the Sales Success Summit hosted by Scott and Graham around financial literacy for uh, sales reps, that session caught my attention. Joining, I know you're going to be at the summit again in the next few days. So yeah, I guess people who are listening to this should definitely look up and you know uh, try and attend the event session at least online, if not in person. So do you want to? introduce the company that we're going to discuss yeah the uh the company that we're going to discuss today is uh anheuser-busch inbev which uh many people will know uh because of their their they're a beer company they're a spirit they're a alcohol company they're um one of the most famous in the world and uh you know they're the company behind uh budweiser and uh, a bunch of other brands uh they're in but uh, they, we wanted to start with them because uh, it's an industry that we don't have to do a lot of explaining about. Uh, you also have a framework of how you typically analyze companies. That framework would be very helpful for sales reps to kind of understand your thinking behind it. Would you like to just give a shine some light on it? Yeah, yeah. Uh, so when it comes to um, you know really kind of delving financial, financially, uh, financially understanding a company. Um, I, I do not have a finance background. Uh, I'm, you know, not, not the greatest with, with numbers, but, uh, I was, I was really trying to understand, uh, what the executives at that company are telling the world in terms of their, um, both their challenges, uh, but also how they're planning on overcoming those challenges, what, how they're going to grow the company or where they're going to cut costs or mitigate risk, you know, these types of things. And, um, it, you know, it's very hard to get interview time with those people. So uh, the, this area of the investor relations section of these companies' websites is a treasure trove in many cases for really being able to understand the business uh, soup to nuts and to be you know, uh, able to, I think, uh, glean, glean the portions of their strategy that might align with um, the solutions and value that you're trying to, 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 you know, push forward and influence them. Got it. I actually find that, so, so the quarterly earnings reports, I think are very valuable. Um, but a lot of times, uh, most of that report is, uh, is the, the CEO or maybe the CFO, um, speaking in generalities about the business. It's, they don't, they, they rarely get, you know, they, they don't get so much into specifics, uh, for the quarterly earnings. Uh, where I find to be really interesting is the questions that are that the analysts are asking, oh. and um, from those financial institutions that are listening in, 
uh, because those questions, though though many of those questions are kind of, um, they sound very positive about the business, they actually represent uh, fears that Wall Street has about that business. And so over time, if you see the same types of questions uh, consistently asked, then um, you can really identify, like, this is an area that um, that investors are worried about for this business. And they haven't gotten great answers from this from the executive leadership on what they're going to do about that particular issue. So, you know, that if you're if you're selling something that might align to fixing that, you know, set of problems, then great. But um I uh I really find, you know, if I'm coming in as a as a more junior seller and uh or even just I got, you know, I'm new to the account. Um, I, I love, I love the 10 K to start, um, ideally, ideally there, uh, you know, if, if you're looking for an investor presentation or sometimes it's called an analyst, uh, day presentation or investor day presentation, um, that, that to me, you know, is probably the most simplified layman friendly version of just understanding holistically, like what the company does, how they make money, what their high level strategies are. Um, and can get you up to speed very quickly. And again, to some degree, you know, to a, to a good degree, like this is something that can be used for external outreach to that company and those executives. But just as much, uh, you you can speak very credibly and intelligently about that company's business to your own executive leadership and help them understand you know, if there's an opportunity here, or if perhaps they're not part, you know, they're they're not they're not putting forth anything that says they're interested about what we do, um, you know, that type of thing. So, uh, as much as much for your own benefit internally as externally uh, are these these types of things. So, and, um, I'd love to show you uh, okay. something from 2019. So, uh, th this is also this is also one thing about the investor day presentations or the analyst day presentations where. Um, the executives will put forth uh, their kind of short and longer term strategy on different areas and largely year to year, that doesn't change. So even though this, this was an investor day that, that happened in 2019 and we had a pandemic since then, um, largely their, I, I, from what I can tell, their, their corporate strategy on growth, on cost reduction, on risk mitigation in these areas hasn't changed. So, um, you know, I'd love to, show you like just some learnings that, that you can tease out. So um, in this investor seminar, there, there were a number of Anheuser-Busch executives that got to speak, you know, and this was over like at least a day or, or maybe even two days worth of presentations, um, which is common for public facing companies to do. So I'm pulling out the one that the, um, the head of sales uh, did for, uh, for Anheuser Busch in uh, in largely in North America focused, so U.S. U.S. focused actually, and and so there, you know, what you're looking for is obviously if you're if you're if you're a buying center, if if kind of your ideal customer profile that your your uh, customer persona that you're selling to is um, in IT, you know, you're looking for that that head of IT uh, to you know head of security or head of uh, in, you know CIO CTO CISO uh, to you know looking for presentations from that person um, you know my my buying center is heads of sales heads of marketing um, and and so I I love it when I can find the chief the U S chief sales officer giving an entire presentation about uh, what his what what his strategy is on growth. And how how Anheuser Busch is going to sell more uh, in 2019 and beyond, and so you know usually they they open with kind of a you know general uh, like landscape of all right here here are the uh, things affecting our market and then here's here's what we're proud of that we're doing and and here's you know a couple of things that I'm going to touch on today so um, you know you can see here that. Uh, he he's laying out the kind of market challenges or or kind of trends in the market um, uh, that that uh, that you need to be aware of and and that you can use. So uh, he's he's talking about um, 
expanding expanding beyond you know the core, which for Anheuser Busch, as you'd imagine, the core is Bud and Bud Light, and uh, you know the, the kind of that that, that core brands and expanding the sales uh, beyond, you know, it, he's talking about super premium. So uh, there's, you know, you can see here, like there's there's a number of uh, brands that they have that are considered, you know, premium brands that, you know, you as a, it costs more in a bar to buy those brands than it would a, 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 pint, of, a pint of bud. Um, you know, the, the, the beyond beer, when you see this, uh, that's, that's kind of, that's kind of talking like, Hmm, interesting. What does he mean by beyond beer? Well, they're going to get into it by talking about the different brands, um, that are not beer. Uh, obviously, you know, uh, hard seltzer is a, is a category that, uh, has exploded in the past few years. So he's going to get into kind of the, 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 um, the, the opportunity there. And, you know, he's, he's doing a nice job of, uh, really expressing uh, where where the revenue you know where the revenue is going to come from in the future. He sees craft brews, you know, their their craft brewing collection as a big driver of growth. He sees seltzer as a very interesting driver of growth. Uh, he's you know they're still going to you know quote unquote protect the core uh, here of Bud Bud Light you know and their their regular ones, and and he's highlighting the. The, the the biggest the biggest kind of growth growth category uh, share gainer for them, which is Michelob Ultra, uh, and so the you know the interesting for, interesting thing for me was when he started breaking down the kind of areas in which they the levers in which they have to affect growth. Um, so they can be you know the they can be the best in terms of their. Uh, retail excellence and their their relationships with uh, with their wholesalers, relationship with their with the end you know consumer stores the and 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 bars and the like. You know they can be the best in terms of technology, internal technology, and that's going to be uh, a differentiator for them. They're going to be the best in terms of their uh, ability to manage manage revenue, which really is you know a lot of that is a a, a different term for. Um, being very uh, disciplined on on costs, and you know that's where, as a salesperson, uh, he starts to break down for you who who the power structure is, and who might be kind of key influencers on his team uh, to be able to uh, then identify people below him uh, that you should be able to you should be reaching out to that that um, you know may uh, may be able to. Uh, again, introduce your concept, your idea, or, or be an influencer in your deal cycle. Um, you know, he talks a little bit about uh, things that weren't really relevant or germane to, to my uh, world, but um, the the interesting here's here's another interesting piece is when he he breaks down um, that you know the different different levers for growth when we talk about that. Um, the the way that they think about it is seemingly that okay we can we can uh, sell more uh, so take the you know same the take the same price points and just sell more beer um, we can uh, you know affect our local market pricing meaning uh, usually you know for a, for a company like this it means that um, different markets are going to be uh, paying a premium for different things in our in our portfolio. And um, then you know there there's uh, a mix like there's a there's an idea of product mix and you'll see this you know you'll see this in many different businesses but in in you know in Anheuser Busch is no different where they're talking about uh, the value of of combining different uh, ancillary uh, portions of their product set. To be able to package them together into something that's valuable for the consumer, um, and you know, you'll see here like he's highlighting you know a, a thing that they did with the Philadelphia Eagles um, to to sell a you know to put to to sell something more novel. You know, um, the you know there's a few different things here that you know I'm not going to go all the way into. Um, in terms of how he defines uh, the these phrases, large format, small format, on premise, um, he talks a bit about you know their relationships with 
uh, convenience stores and with uh, you know bars and restaurants like Buffalo Wild Wings um, and and even uh, large big box re retailers like Walmart. You know all of those are a huge part. Of, you know they they kind of make up the the vast majority of their client base and who they care about. Um, so thinking about you know how they you know the the your, how your solution helps them. Uh, with those relationships in particular might be an area. Um, and, and the other interesting thing is that they don't necessarily benchmark themselves against other uh, alcohol, uh, other beer companies. Um, that when, you know, he, it's very interesting that the head of sales uh, is saying that we are, you know, behind uh, in terms of our position compared to other consumer packaged goods companies. Uh, PepsiCo, you know, Procter & Gamble, Kellogg's, Unilever, Johnson Johnson, and and so there's the you know it's it's representative of again how they think about you know their growth that we're that we're not uh, you know that we want to be number one in in a place like Walmart um, we want to be number one compared to a Pepsi we want to be number one compared to uh, a Procter and Gamble in terms of uh, you know in a in a retail store it's all about do dollars per square foot of retail space. So are they, you know, are they, um, are they able to exercise that, you know, that uh, strategy because they're comparing themselves against those companies. So again, you know, if you have companies uh, that are your clients in these, cat, you know, uh, with these logos, like Anheuser-Busch might care about them because they benchmark themselves against them. Um, and and this is you know this is an era, interesting area of the conversation where he's talking about um, t the technology evolution of how they sell, uh, and there you know he talks very specifically about a number of areas where they're investing heavily, uh, it, you know to to be able to create a call it you know a, a more streamlined way to get um, you know. Insights about uh, about you know the beer consumption uh, or or different category consumptions by consumers in that in that local market. You know, walking into your your local Seven Eleven, um, a rep you know a a rep from uh, Anheuser Busch or a, or you know an, a representative, they want to arm them uh, with insights to be able to say to that convenience store owner. Actually, in in your your area looks a lot like these other areas here, and in those areas, uh, they are having great success by stocking more, you know, hard seltzer that's flavored with lime, like that that for an example, and and so uh, it goes from kind of a traditional uh, handshake type of relationship, uh, you know, and more transactional to one that's uh, more strategic and more uh, value adding. Uh, to to that C suite retailer, so you know in, it's it's very interesting that um, the same concepts in B two B you know software selling that that we know about it in terms of we have to be providers of insight, we have to uh, you know help them help our clients make sense of the noise and et, et cetera. These are the same concepts that even a beer company are are really focused on, and uh, it you know it's something that. Um, you're able to, you're, you might be able to use uh, to your advantage in terms of uh, help, help formulating a message and a point of view that really speaks to their ability to do those things. Um, so, you know, the, there's the the great thing about this presentation, and you'll find this every now and then. It's not it's not a lot, but uh, they did transcribe the entire presentation. So, on their website, on their investors site, you can find a, a complete transcription of everything he said on each of these slides. Which you know, God bless them, because uh, it it really helps helps us, uh, and and ultimately I think it helps them because they're getting a more personalized uh, outreach, and uh, you know they can separate the wheat from the chaff in terms of who's reaching out to them and what their point of view is and how they're going to provide value to them. This is fantastic. It's like a masterclass on analyzing company reports. I should tell you, Evan. Um, you know they're. It, in in many ways, uh, and not for every company, but in, in many companies, they they do give their um, you know executives beyond the CEO and CFO time to speak to uh, investors and, and kind of you know in, investors at large, and and you can pick out a lot of great um, nuggets from what they're what they're telling you. 
I, I, I chose is that it, you can you can get to um, low hanging fruit in terms of knowledge uh, with with that type of presentation. Yeah. Interestingly, uh, their most recent quarterly earnings talks about how uh, AB InBev just got about 250 of their supply chain suppliers together for a conference to understand how their world is evolving. And then they got over like a thousand, uh, over a hundred retail focused startups for their accelerator program to see on the consumer end what's cutting edge. So that's right. Yeah, they they in many in many ways they they consider themselves partly a technology company, right. um, and and so they are in need of uh, a lot of different types of software solutions for that. Uh, so you know they're they it's there there's there's potential there uh, for for people to uncover. Clearly, clearly, this has been great. Thank you so much. Uh, I'm sure users will like it. Uh, will will share the links to what uh, Evan had shared on the on the screen. So yeah, we, we look forward to getting your feedback and comments and uh, feel free to look us up on LinkedIn and uh, happy to continue the conversation. We'll come back with a few more companies very soon. Thank you. Thank Thanks you. for having me. Absolutely. Bye.